Now, the topic before us is shape and size of the cells. The cells of different living organisms may differ in shape and size. We have already seen that example of a unicellular organism is amoeba. Amoeba has no definite shape. Its shape may be just like this at one event and the other time its shape may be this one. It keeps on changing its shape. Within a multicellular organism, there are a variety of cells. The cells may be blood cells, muscle cells, nerve cells. Some cells are long, other cells are short, some cells are circular, whereas the other cells are oval shaped. The size and shape of the cells are related to the specific function they perform. A nerve cell is long and branched as it has to transmit signals throughout the body. On the other hand, the muscle cell is small and spindle shaped which helps in movement. The red blood cells in the case of human beings are spherical. The components of the cell are enclosed in a membrane which is known as cell membrane. The cell membrane provides shape to the cells of plants and animals. Then in the case of plant cells, there is an additional covering for the cell membrane which is known as cell wall. Cell wall is present in the case of plant cells. Cell wall provides shape and rigidity to these cells. Now the question arises, what is the size of the cells? The size of the cells in the living organisms may be very very small as a micrometer or micron or may be as large as a few centimeters. The smallest cell is in bacteria and the largest cell is the egg of an ostrich. The size of the cell has no relation with the size of the body of the animal or plant. It means that we should not think that if the size of the plant or animal is big, the size of the cell present inside it will be very big. The cells in the elephant, it is not necessary that the cells in the elephant be much bigger than those in a rat. The size of the cell is related to its function. For example, nerve cells both in the elephant and rat are long and branched. The nerve cells perform the same function in the elephant and rat that is the transferring of messages. Now the next point is division of labor in multicellular organisms. There is division of labor in multicellular organisms such as human beings. This means that different parts of the human body perform different functions. A human body has a heart to pump blood. A human body has a stomach to digest food and so on. Similarly, division of labor is also seen within a single cell. Each cell has got certain specific components that is some components are present inside the cell which are known as cell organelles. Each kind of cell organelle performs a specific function which may include making new materials in the cell whereas some other cell organelle is related to clearing up waste material from the cell and so on. A cell is able 
to live and perform its functions because of the cell organelles present inside it. These organelles together constitute the basic unit called the cell. Now, what is the structure of the cell? The word cell has arrived, has been taken from the Latin word cellula, which means small room. Cell is the basic structural and functional unit of life. If we study a cell under a microscope, we would come across three features almost in every cell. There is a plasma membrane and there is a nucleus and there is cytoplasm which is the fluid present throughout the cell. We can also say that the cell consists of three parts. First is cell membrane, the second is nucleus and the third is cytoplasm. Within the cytoplasm lies extremely small but distinct structures called organelles which may be present here and there. Some organelles such as nucleus and Golgi apparatus are usually solitary. Solitary means single. Where, while there are other cell organelles such as mitochondria, chloroplasts, per oxisomes, lysosomes, which can be numerous, that is hundreds to thousands. Now, the question before us is cell organelles. An organelle is a structure found in the cytoplasm that has a specific form and functions. This is the picture of a cell. And there are many cell organelles which you can see are there. The name organelle comes from the idea that these structures are parts of the cell as organs are to the body. It means that as a body has organs in the same way a cell has small organelles which are known as organelles. These are the parts of the cell. Cell organelles are membrane bound structures within a cell. You can see here that these are the cell organelles. These are all cell organelles. These are membrane bound structures within a cell. In prokaryotes, the membrane bound cell organelles and a defined nuclear region are absent. It means that in the case of prokaryotes, membrane bound cell organelles are not present and there is no definite nuclear reason but in the case of eukaryotic cells they have nuclear membrane as well as membrane enclosed organelles some important examples of cell organelles are nucleus endoplasmic reticulum golgi apparatus mitochondria, vacuole, is not appearing as such, ribosomes, you can see here ribosomes, these are the ribosomes, these small points. The cell organelles are important because they carry out some very crucial functions in a cell. Some of these organelles are visible only with an electron microscope. Large organelles such as nucleus and vacuoles are easily vis visible with the light microscope. Cell wall, as already told, is present only in the case of animal cells and is not present in the animal cells. It is only present in plant cells. The chloroplasts are also found only in the case of plant cells. 
because they are involved in the making of chlorophyll. Lysosomes is found in the case of these are the lysosomes. These are found in the case of animal cells. Now plasma membrane. The plasma membrane is also known as cell membrane or cytoplasmic membrane. It is a biological membrane that surrounds the cytoplasm. This is the cytoplasm all here and there. And cytoplasm is covered by this cell membrane. This is the cell membrane which is of black color. It separates the contents of the cell from outer side, material outside the cell. You can see here that this wall keeps all the cell organelles within the cell. It holds the contents of the cell in place. This cell membrane or plasma membrane is known as is semi permeable and selectively permeable. It means that it can either let a substance pass through freely, pass through to a limited extent or not pass through at all. It means that it does not allow each and every type of liquid or gas to freely pass through it. It is semi permeable. It may allow some gases or liquids to pass through it or it may now allow at all or it may allow only to a some restricted extent. It is called selectively permeable bit because it allows only selected substances to enter and leave the cell. For the examples of substances may be oxygen, carbon dioxide and water. It prevents but it, it, it means plasma membrane prevents the movement of other substances. It does not allow cytoplasm. These Cytoplasm is not visible here. All this is cytoplasm in, in here inside the cell. So, cell membrane does not allow the cytoplasm to move out of the cell. In animals, plasma membrane is the outer body, outer covering of the cell, while in plants and prokaryotes. It is usually covered by a cell wall, which is the outer covering outside the cell membrane. If now the question arises, what will happen if this plasma membrane, this plasma membrane breaks down or ruptures? What will happen? There will be free movement of all these substances in and out of the cell. The contents of the cell. That is the cell organelles, whether these are mitochondria, Golgi operators, nucleus, or ribosomes, all the contents of the cell, and also the liquid which is present inside the cell, that is the cytoplasm, in which all these organism, uh, cell organelles travel or move, will leak out, and the cell will not be able to perform basic functions. We can say that if this is the cell wall, a plasma membrane, and it breaks all the parts which are present inside, which will go out, all the material which may be present may move in, and the cell will not be able to perform the functions. And such a cell with broken down plasma membrane or ruptured down plasma membrane will die. What is plasma membrane? It is flexible. It is made up of protein and lipid molecules. However, we can observe the structure of the plasma membrane only through an electron microscope. We cannot see the structure of the plasma membrane with our neck eye. We will have to take the help of electron microscope. Thanks for watching. If you like our course, Please spare some time to give a star rating to our course.